already made a short video today showing how bad they were chemtrailing. But look at this. See this in the trees? It's everywhere. And before people ask, there are no manufacturing plants here. Simply a Budweiser storage facility. You seeing that? Well, Richie, those are spiders. Yeah, actually they're not. And look at all the stuff in the sky blowing by. You seeing this? It's all over the tree. Those are spider webs. Yeah, no, they're not. No, they're not. And then what the hell is this? It looks like it's snowing out. And for those doubting Thomases, remember, I've already asked to see if there was any manufacturing facilities close by. There are not. Look at the pole. All the way up. Look at that. And they're about 10, 30 feet long. Absolutely everywhere. Everybody at the gas station is looking at me like I'm a mental case. That's all right. That's all right. We can deal with that. And I've got a zip, clean Ziploc bag. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bag some of this. Oh, yeah. It's all over everything. And look how long they are. It would have to be raining spiders for this to be the case. And it's December. It's 20 degrees last night. I'm going to show you enough evidence in this video to understand why they're spraying the sky why they've denied it for so long, why they've suddenly come out with it, and why I'm finding spider web like filaments in the sky from Missouri to Illinois to the Mississippi River banks for a 30 square mile distance. I've found the patents that are going to show you exactly what their plan is, and their plan is to stage a great alien deception, and I'm going to prove it. This video I took right here is over the Pacific Ocean. I'm standing on a cliff. Notice that the sky is completely blocked out. Now I'm driving through the Southwest going into Texas. Again, the sky is totally blocked out. The reason I'm showing this and the reason I made this video from east to west, north to south to show how they're blocking out the sun absolutely, totally, and undeniably is because even on my channel, your fellow subscribers seem to think that they're not spraying the sky. That every, you know, I always get the comments, well, they're not spraying here in Illinois, or they're not spraying here in Nebraska, or they're not spraying here in Texas. Well, I guess I just picked the lux luckiest week ever to drive from the West Coast to the East Coast and videotape because everywhere I went, everywhere, the sky was entirely blocked out. And not only was it blocked out by airplanes, but I stumbled upon a factory, much like the one we have here in Boston, down in Arkansas. And I'm showing that to you right now. And they're spraying from the factory on a Sunday. Now, I'd play the audio that I had, but you, all you can hear is my truck tires and my audio is super low. So I'm voicing over right now. But a channel called Weather Warfare 101 once made a video where he tied these ground-based facilities in with the Doppler radar, in with the weather management system, and they all work together as a team. Much like the NASA facility that I showed you that does this exact same thing. On certain days before a storm front's supposed to come in, they will absolutely inundate the sky, just like they are right now. Does that look like a normal factory on a Sunday in Arkansas? But there's a storm coming, so they're prepping the sky right now. This is in the Appalachian Mountains in North Carolina. I'm heading north now. Same thing. This is the same spiderweb type filament that I found in the trees. This is in Virginia. Spraying, spraying, spraying. The sky was relatively blue until the planes got out there and just started spraying away. They're not doing this simply because they enjoy spraying stuff in the sky. They have a much more diabolical 
plan and I'm going to lay it out using their own scientific paperwork and their own technology to show you. So check this out. This is going to get crazy. Again, in a real world, this should be more than enough information for you to show your family, your friends, your loved ones why they're spraying the sky. But sadly, with the cognitive dissonance that we're, we're dealing with and the MK Ultra that people are under, chances are they're still not going to see it. It's crazy, but it is what it is. Dan, because these guys stay busy. We're only seeing what we're seeing. But like I said, traveling from east to west, you can see these guys doing this stuff all the time. All the time. Here's one of their graphs showing how they would do it. Well, we would just release a balloon right here, and we would let some mist off, much like a volcano, which would be perfectly harmless and helpful for the environment. And it would block the sun's rays. Well, we know they're doing this. We know they're doing this. I'm looking at it right now here in Boston, right now as we speak. But here's what I think the plan is. Take a look at this video clip. I muted the volume because you don't really need to hear the volume to see what's going on. But this is at a baseball field. This is a, this is a real live event. Everyone in the crowd seeing it. Everyone at home on television is seeing it. Do you see this thing? That's a hologram. This is real. I double and triple check this. This is totally real. These people are seeing this thing. Notice the shadow it's casting. Every time I put my mouse over the screen, it makes it bounce around. But look at the shadows this thing's casting. Look at the shadow on the field. Look how real this is. Now bear this in mind. This is the technology that they're showing us. This is for entertainment purposes. Imagine if you saw a bunch of things like this or worse show up in the night sky, accompanied by some weaponry that you were unfamiliar that our military or DARPA had already invented. Do you see what I'm saying? Using the barium, strontium, and aluminum that's in the sky, and which ironically is in the sky right above this hologram thing right now. I don't know why my computer's running so slow. It is what it is. Notice the sky up here is completely chemtrailed. It allows them to, they can use the barium, strontium, aluminum that's in the atmosphere as a, a theater, a movie screen, an enormous movie screen. And like I said, couple that with technology that we have no knowledge of at all and then couple that with holographic technology that makes this look like a cartoon and you understand where they're going the fake or staged alien invasion the fact that the military the pentagon airlines everyone is coming forth suddenly and magically out of the thin blue sky telling us that ufos are real even though they're violating uh, non-disclosure agreements, even though they're going against orders, suddenly there's no recourse. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely staggering to the imagination. But check this out. Here's scientific paper at pubmed.gov. Photo refractive holographic recording in strontium barium niobate fibers. We describe what our knowledge to the blah, 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 blah. A plane wave reference and image carrying optic beam are incident upon the fiber Long story short, this goes back to 1988. Strontium barium holographic recording. Get out of here, will ya? Here's another one. OSA. Multiplex. Multiplex holography in strontium barium niobate with applied field. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? 1992. Optical Society of America. These people have been working on this for decades. This one goes back to... I think 1988, oh, 1997. So it's 1988, 1992, and 1997. Superior real-time holographic storage, storage properties in doped potassium, sodium, strontium, barium, niobate crystals. So you take this, and this, and this, and this, and then things like this at a baseball game for entertainment, you see what I'm saying? And then you tie it in with this. Never-ending news stories like this right here. Never-ending news stories. U.S. Navy guys that signed non-disclosure agreements, but they're still coming out on CNN, 
CNN has their base of operations right inside the Pentagon. So you tell me what's going on. Seriously. And then suddenly things like this show up again. Bob Lazar is suddenly being pushed on Netflix, Larry King Live, everywhere, everywhere. The story with him and Jeremy Corbell is absolutely and totally laughable. It's totally laughable. But much like Snopes and much like Alex Jones used to be, when you see it on Joe Rogan, you know it's completely and totally fraudulent. Do you see what I'm saying? For decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments had been taking them seriously all along. From E.T. to Area 51, the idea of aliens has long dominated the human imagination. Hey, what is that? Front now, the former Pentagon military official who ran the covert government program up until this last November, Luis Elizondo. Luis, thank you so much for your time tonight. I mean, first, tell us what the purpose of the program was and why it was so secretive. It was misled by the company. And what Parliament was misled by the company. And what this... What I could... UFO sightings around the world have reached an all-time high. According to data from the National UFO Reporting Center, UFO sightings experienced a boom in the 1980s. Reported sightings went from less than 5,000 in 1980 to about 10,000 in 1990. Utility fog, a concept theorized by nanoengineer John Storrs Hall, who suggested that a collective of nanotechnological devices called foglets could link together into a complex aerial swarm network. Hall initially came up with this idea as a way to prevent trauma in car crashes by stiffening the air inside the car. However, if this idea were to be extended to the atmosphere of our planet, then we'd be able to conjure things out of thin air, like wizards. If these foglets were to be directed by an AI, they could be morphed into any structure that the user finds convenient. A whole planet made up of these foglets gives us the concept of a heaven world somewhat like the idea of a simulation heaven that we see in VR, except that this would be real life. Think of Utility Fog as a video game where the characters can leap off the screen and interact with you, disassembling and reassembling themselves into furniture, landscapes, or food anytime, anywhere. The surface of these heaven worlds would be covered in what we call programmable matter, also known as smart dust. The grains of sand under your feet are all actually robots of three-dimensional tactile material that can reshape and reform itself to suit your deepest desires. Programmable matter is the idea that matter can change its shape and physical properties just by reconfiguring its atoms. Think of it as the holodeck on steroids, except that you don't have to escape reality, you can just reprogram it. If the nanobots that make up this smart dust become cheap and plentiful enough, it would truly be bridging the gap between man and what anyone from the Dark Ages would consider a god. On a heaven world, the very dirt we walk in and the air we breathe will contain AI-directed nanites, a custom universe where you'll no longer be able to tell virtual reality from actual reality. At this point, it will no longer matter if the universe is a programmed simulation, because you'll be able to rewrite that program anyway. In fact, Google's director of engineering, Ray Kurzweil, has suggested that these nanomachines would unconditionally guarantee immortality, replacing every cell in our body until we become a collective of nanites ourselves. The US military made a broad agency announcement, or BAA, soliciting proposals on tip-based nanofabrication to make nanowires, nanotubes, or quantum dots. Under contract with DARPA, nanotechnology corporation Zyvex has been researching three proposed nanoreplication methods these include nanoepitaxy, mechanosynthesis, and bioassembly. Yes, Mrs. Purdy, you are indeed pregnant. What are the chances that he'll die from the same deficiency that killed his brother? Well, we can't really say, but of course we'll take precautions, build an immunity wing. 
would be a great study. We'll do everything we can. Basic maintenance, who knows? One day we might find a cure. A good study? Huh? Mr. Freddy, Mr. Freddy, please. Please. Oh, no.